Hey, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and uh, today I wanted to go over uh, an actual problem from section 4.5. This is the graph of a rational function. Uh, this will also help with uh, the project 2 that's going to be due next week, so it might be a good idea to kind of make sure you know how to do these and work through the entire process of the uh, breaking down the rational equation. All right, so let's go ahead and start off. So here's the problem. It says analyze the graph, uh, and here's the graph right there. And what I'm going to do is take a little snippet of it and copy it onto my whiteboard. All right. So here's the function right here, and the first thing it's asking us to do is write the uh, given function as a single rational expression, then factor the numerator and denominator, and then uh, we're going to put it down here. So this first part's pretty easy. Um, all we got to do is factor this numerator here. So to do that. So f of x is equal to, this is going to be x, parentheses, x, parentheses, all over x plus 5, x plus 5. And then remember, we have to find two values that when multiplied together give us a negative 20, and when added together give us a negative 19. So that is going to be minus 20 and plus one. You can try uh, different combinations, but that one's pretty straightforward. So we have x minus 20 times x plus one all over x plus five. All right, so come down here, x minus 20 times x plus one all over x plus five. All right, and then the next part says, what is the domain? Remember, the domain is, is every allowable x value that we can put into this function. So the only thing that's going to give us an undefined function is anything that makes the denominator equal to 0. As we can see, uh, the only thing that makes the denominator equal to 0 here is a negative 5, because negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So it's going to be all values x such that x is not equal to negative 5. And what that's saying, uh, this is in uh, interval notation, excuse me, set notation. And uh, it's just saying that it's all x values such that x is just not equal to 5. All right, the next thing says, write it in lowest terms. So there's asking us, can we cancel any factors out? The answer is no. So come back up here. And it's already in its lowest terms because we can't, there's no uh, factors to cancel out. The next thing it says, locate the intercepts of the graph, select the co uh, correct choice below, and if necessary, fill in the answer box to complete your choice. So remember, the y intercept is going to be when the x is equal to zero. So if I just put in a zero for x, here, it's going to zero out all three of those terms, and I'm just going to be looking at negative 20 over 5. So y-intercept, y-intercept is just equal to is that negative 20 over 5, which is negative 4. And the x-intercept is when the y is equal to 0. So really, we're just solving for this top part here. So if we just let this, because remember, if, if we set this equal to 0, if we multiply both sides by x plus 5, 0 times x plus 5 is still 0. So really, we're just solving for the top part, and that's going to give us a value of positive 20 and negative 1. So the x-intercepts in ascending order is negative 1 and positive 20 because we can set both of these factors up here equal to 0 so let's go ahead and put in our answers all right so we have 
a y intercept at negative 4. Um, right? Yes, because that's when you write the variance. And we have an x intercept at negative 1 and 20. All right. This is a long problem, so bear with me. It says determine the behavior of the graph of f at x intercepts. Select the correct choice below, and if necessary, fill in the answer box to complete your choice. So here we're talking about multiplicity. And if this was like an x plus 5 squared, uh, then we'd have an even multiplicity, or an x plus 5 to the fourth. But here, every factor we have is to the first power. That means we have an odd multiplicity on our x-intercepts, which means it's going to go uh, right through them. So the graph will cross the x-axis. Uh, the graph will touch and touch. It doesn't touch it. Remember, it touches it when we have an even multiplicity, when we have a factor raised to an even power, which we do not in this case. So it's only going to cross the x-axis at our x-intercepts, and our x-intercepts were negative 1 and 20. All right. The next thing it says is determine the vertical asymptotes. Well, the vertical asymptotes uh, are any factors that are remaining, or we set the factors in the denominator equal to zero, uh, ones that we can't remove. And since in simplified form, the x plus 5 is still there, that means we're going to have a vertical asymptote at, and I think it says type it in equation, so x is equal to negative 5, because negative 5 makes the denominator uh, equal to zero. All right, next question, it says, determine the behavior of the graph on either side of the vertical asymptotes. So for this problem here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my calculator. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to y equals. And for the top, remember to put the whole top in parentheses. Oops. So we're going to have x squared minus 19x minus 20 and that's all going to be divided by remember to put the bottom in parentheses to x plus 5 all right let's go ahead and graph that and i have it uh pretty far zoomed out so if it's not like this you might want to zoom out on it and uh, we can see that from the left side, it's approaching negative infinity. And from the right side, it's approaching positive infinity of that line there. So which one is that? It approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity on both sides. No, it approaches infinity on one side of the asymptote and uh, at x equals, is that negative 5? And negative infinity on the other. So it's approaching different infinities, one positive, one negative. So that should be my answer there. All right, the next thing it says, determine the horizontal or oblique asymptote if one exists. Select the correct choice below. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, problem here. And if we notice that the uh, exponent the highest exponent on the top is larger than the highest exponent on the bottom. Um, only by one, though. But as long as it's higher, we have no horizontal asymptote. So we can say we don't have a horizontal asymptote. But to see if we have a, an oblique asymptote. As long as it's exactly one higher on the top than it is the bottom, then we do have an oblique asymptote. And we can find that oblique asymptote either through long division or synthetic division. I'm going to use synthetic division this time. So since negative 5 is my value on the bottom, that makes that equal to 0. I'm going to use that and divide that into the coefficients of the top. Uh, I think I'm using synthetic division. I said I was going to use. So to use synthetic division here, I just drop down the 1. 1 times 5, negative 5 is negative 5. Drop that down, and that's negative 24. So this is just y equals 1x, which is x minus 24.
minus 24. And, uh, and that's it. We don't even have to do this last part of the synthetic division because that's just the remainder part and the oblique asymptote does not care about the remainder. So uh, y equals uh, x minus 24. All right, so y equals x minus 24. All right. Determine the points, if any, at which the graph F intersects the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. If one exists, select the correct choice. So in order for two equations to intersect, they have to be equal. So if we set this equation equal to this equation and we solve for x, uh, we'll find out where it's equal. However, we can also look at our calculator and I'm going to put in that oblique asymptote, which is x minus 24. Oops. Excuse me. x minus 24. And go ahead and graph. And it looks like it's approaching it from this side, but it doesn't look like it ever touches. It looks like it gets closer and closer. And the same thing from the bottom. Sometimes it'll cross over that... Uh, that oblique asymptote but it doesn't look like it does there now i could zoom out uh, let's just kind of try to make sure so i'm going to zoom out a little bit here and get it way out there and then i'm going to do a second calculate and i'm going to do an intersect function to see so the blue line the red line and it errors out and that tells me that, that there, there's no intersection there so I'm going to go back here, and like I said, we could also work it out by setting those two equal to each other, multiplying both sides by x plus 5, and then uh, distributing and working it out, which uh, you should get kind of an impossible uh, equation there. All right, so if I go back to here, um, there is no point at which the graph of f intersects the horizontal or oblique asymptote. And this one says, to graph F using a graphing utility, determine an appropriate viewing window necessary to obtain a complete graph. Um, so they all start at X minus 50 for the X values, negative 50. For the positive ones, uh, one goes to zero, but the rest go to 50. So let's see if we need to go to 50. Um, let's go back to graph. Oops. Quit. Graph. And uh, let's go ahead and set that window in there. So I'm going to put the table set up. Window. And we're going to go from negative 50 to. Ah, come on. All right. Sorry. Window. So negative uh, 50. And let's see. So I'm going to see about 50. And then for the y's, let's go negative 100 to 100. I'm just kind of using the numbers that they're using there. Oh, I messed up the scale, didn't I? X scale is 10. And uh, negative 100 to positive 100. And their y scale is 20. 20. All right. Let's graph that. Yeah, that looks like a perfect window there. It shows me both sides of this graph. It clearly shows me this oblique asymptote. Um, yeah, it looks good to me. So I would say it would be uh, not that one. Not that one. Looks like this last one from negative 50 to positive 50 for my x's and from negative 100 to positive 100 for my y's. Uh, any ones with a zero in there is just not going to show me enough. And what do the results look like? Well, let's take a look at our calculator. And it looks like this one right there. That's it. All right. Uh, 
that's all for this section. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.